Turner. He's gone, a good catch that, and a good delivery too from Thompson. Marsh had to go away towards the leg side to take it, possibly from an inside edge, and Jeff Thompson has broken through. The first wicket down at 111, which is the England side's unlucky number. Barry Wood out for 52. Court Marsh, bold Thompson. Applause for Barry Wood and for Thompson. Wood in his comeback to test cricket made six in the first innings and 52 in the second David Steele now will face his first ball from Thompson made that splendid 50 in the first innings off the mark with a four there rather a streaky one but to get off the mark is uh, the main thing it doesn't quite matter how you do it he has a very good temperament this fellow got it up skillfully away past the finer of the two short legs hurrying away to the boundary and it's another four to David Steele so his eight runs comprising two boundaries at the start of this second innings Ashley Mullet with his off spinners from the pavilion end it's a fine shot there's no luck short Steele really putting it away with a lot of power through the offside so out of David Steele's 15 runs he's found the boundary three times Malik to Steele once again he's worked it away down fine on the late side so most of his runs coming in boundaries four boundaries now to David Steele out of his score of 19 Jeff Thompson quite pleased to sit down and get a breather. Very hot day, he's under a goodish spell now. To start the eighth over of this, his second spell. And another wide. Jeff Thompson, who was so cool, calm and collected. Crowds are becoming a little bit angry here with the situation. And this Australian field now, down to just two slips. Gone with the array of close catches. Doing the job that they're after, keeping England quiet. He's a tough character, John Edwards. That's not going to worry him too much. So four hours for John Edwards for his 62. And yes, he's got one through. That'll skid away through for four. So first time he's found the fence for an hour and a half. And moving his total on to 66. Shout for the BW. More in hope than anything else. Richard come 
down the wicket a fair way. David Steele's benefit year. Very nice timing for him to make the England side. Thick edge, just as Chapel has moved from ordinary slip to leg slip. And the 150 comes up for England in second innings. Sweep and four runs beating Greg Chappell into the fence. Good shot that from Steele. Mallet just straying a fraction towards the leg stump. He picked that up very well indeed. Four runs. It was a good stroke. He gave himself a little bit of room there. He and Chappell got his left hand to it. 75 for 179 John Edrich and 35 to Steele. It's a more militant approach from John Edrich. Fielding by Ross Edwards there. Saved one run. Looked to be a certain four. Turned it into a three. Well, the show of LBW in this trouble here. And they've got a race. Two men both down at one end. John Edwards calling for him. Steele saying no. And John Edwards very livid there. He got all the way down, run all the way back. A couple of misfields by the Australians. <laughs> John Edwards very unhappy indeed. Well, he'll never surely get a bigger let off than that. That's the the dive in Marsh. Sweep off the pad, four leg buys. And the England score moving on to 199. So 199 for one. It's still going to be Ian Chappell. And John Edrich on 91, the batsman to face him. Out for LBW, but Edrich again had come a long way down the pitch when that ball struck him. And Chapel bowling around the wicket at him. So off the pad, you can see it again the 200, the spin there from Chapel. Edrich well outside the off stump, foot a long way down the pitch. So the leg by bringing up the 200 for England, 200 for one. I think Ian Chappell's absolutely right taking the new ball now. 98 from Edrich. 45 steel. And of course, if they were to get a wicket with it very early or very quickly, then one would wonder whether Tony Gregg would bring Dennis Amos to the wicket tonight. I rather doubt that. Yes, he's running back for the second. And he's home. So John Edrich has got a hundred for England. An unspectacular one, but a very, very important one indeed for England 
today. It's taken John five and a half hours, and he's got a supporter coming on the field there to shake his hand. Pulling him off with the towel, and here comes the copper. Still, he looks a friendly sort of chap. Just enthusiastic, and just wanting to congratulate John Edrich on a very important hundred today. Took him five and a half hours, 331 minutes, in fact. And he, he hit ten fours. Yeah, David Steele will be taking strike now on 45. The total on 215 and Ian Chappell pulling one right out of the hat because instead of Thompson or Walker, it's going to be Doug Waters. Hasn't bowled before in this game. And a very interesting bowling change. He's done it again. He's broken the partnership. Now, what a tremendous ploy from Ian Chappell. He's pulled Walters in, the great partnership breaker in Australian cricket. He's bowled David Steele a full toss and taken a brilliant diving catch away to his right. There it is again. Full toss, hit back, wide of Walters, who takes a great catch, diving away onto the onside of the wicket. No wonder the Australians are smiling out there. They've waited a long time for the second wicket. It's a very, very good piece of captaincy and a good piece of batting from David Steele in his second test match innings. It took him two and a quarter hours to make that 45. Dennis Amos had to survive 25 minutes at the close of play for his six not out. Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson were the bowlers in that period, and he got through it without any great alarms. Walters bowled only the two overs. That good ploy of Chappell's didn't last very long, but it served its purpose. Thompson bowled quite fast from the pavilion end the last couple of overs. Well, John Edrich, 104 not out, a splendid innings, a typical Edrich innings. He averaged only 34 per session all day. It was fairly slow going but it's got England into a strong position with 277, the overall lead with eight wickets still in hand. I bet Tony Gregg's very, very happy with that. I'm not sure I'd be quite as happy if I were in the same position. 225 runs all day was fairly slow going. I thought they should have pushed it along a little bit more if their intention, as it obviously is, is to win the game rather than draw it.